We've reached our first junction of the day. We are taking Long Bunk, Long Bunk Trail and then Little Catalucci Trail. But a lot of people start by going up Mount Sterling Trail, but it is 2.2 miles of climb. We've already been on it for 0.5 miles exactly. And it was a climb. <laughs> um, good afternoon from the Great Smoky Mountains National Park. Once again, it is Friday, April 23rd, 2021. And I am in the Little Catalucci area, the North Carolina side. I'm with my friend Robin again. Hi. We're going to have some fun. <laughs> um, we are taking, we started on about a half a mile trail of Mount Sterling, and then we've taken Long Bunk. We are going to take Little Catalucci Trail from Long Bunk to Pretty Hollow Trail, but we're only going to Campsite 39 on Pretty Hollow, which I think is like, I don't know, maybe half a mile in. That's where we'll stay for the night. Then we're going to come back off of Pretty Hollow to I think it's Palmer Creek and then from Palmer Creek Trail we are going to take Baxter Mountain Road I think is what it's called for about a half a mile and from there I'm stalling because I don't remember I think it's Baxter no it's Balsam Mountain trail up to the Benton Mackay Trail where we will stay Saturday night at Laurel Gap Shelter. And then from Laurel Gap Shelter on Sunday we will travel the Benton Mackay Trail but it's also called the Balsam Mountain Trail to Mount Sterling Ridge Trail. We will pass by Campsite 38 where there is a fire tower. Um, Sterling Mountain is one of the higher peaks in the Smokies and um, the pinnacle is treed. So there's not much views except for maybe in the winter um, at the top of the mountain. And there's a fire tower right there that apparently has some stunning views. And while rain, of course, is in the forecast, Sunday is looking partly sunny. So I'm hoping we have some nice views atop the fire tower. For now, I will take these views. We're just a couple miles in and we're just taking a little bit of a break getting some water and we're by a really pretty creek but this uh, trail doesn't get enough love I mean, <clears throat> excuse me I know it's it's kind of obscure where you get into the trail and it's not on one of the popular thoroughfares and that kind of thing but it's super pretty um, I know that you know it's springtime so all of the trails are really pretty right now but we're seeing all kinds of trillium. I think it's trillium. We've actually taken a bunch of pictures and we're going to do a leaf snap and uh, try to figure out what they are. Um, but we've seen a lot of the may apples and we're looking for mushrooms. But I'm not seeing any mushrooms. So um, it might be too early here. It's just a real pretty 
um, area we've dipped down to the valley so that means we're about to go up again I'm sure <laughs> we have made it 2.6 miles and of course there's more up than we thought but it is worth it way off in the distance there is a mountain I don't know how well you can see it on here I wish I knew which mountain and then behind Robin wow look at that view Okay, it looks like we're coming up on, I think it's Hannah Cemetery. Coming to the end of the Long Bunk Trail. Gosh, look how old some of those stones are. Wow. Okay, so just a little bit beyond the junction to the little Cat Catalucci Trail is the Hannah Cabin. This is the family that settled here uh, back in the 1800s. Of course, that was the cemetery of theirs that we just passed. Um, so we're not going to go up there. We, as I said just a few minutes ago, we're pretty pressed for time. Um, when we first got here, I made I made a mistake on the time zones um, because I was really tired last night. Uh, when we got to the hotel and so I lost an hour there and then when we got here uh, there were those two gentlemen from Ohio that we stopped and talked to for a while and um, we're just a little bit behind we're hoping to make camp before uh, sunset I think well <laughs> yeah I mean there's no sun out but you know um, we tend to have this thing of just rolling right in <laughs> So, <laughs> we're just going to keep going. Wow. I don't think we're done for the day with the ups. But that was pretty big, Robin, wasn't it? That was pretty big. Oof. That was worth it in the end. It was worth it. For the church. Because look what we found. We found a pretty little church. I'm going to, whoa, attempt to climb this unnecessary hill. This is not part of the Smoky Mountain 900 miler. So I'm being ridiculous right now. But I'm told that you can ring the bell. So it's worth it. Oh God. I mean, I think it's worth it. <laughs> Okay. I don't know. I'm about to. Oh, there's a cord right here. Oh, so pretty. Look at this. I could come to Jesus every week in this church. Oh. Oh, man. Oh, man. I'm sorry in advance if this is too loud. Oh. Oh, 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 my pack. I have to shimmy through the door. <laughs> Just a little further from the church, less than a half a mile, um, is the cook cabin.
Beautiful property. I think I'll buy it. Wonder how much they'll want for it. We are at the top of our last climb of the day. I think we're like it. We've climbed 2,600 feet or something like that. I don't know. It's a lot. Um, and we're at six, six and a half miles. And we were rewarded with this beautiful view. Oh, beautiful view. And this awesome little fairy ranch uh, that someone had the energy to create. Isn't it just so cute? Isn't it just adorable? I love it. So cute. And then we have a little bit of a view back this way too. This is where we came from right here. Awesome. And now we go down. <laughs> and we should have about, I think it's about two, a little over two miles left. It's still, the sun's still out, or at least it's peeking out from the clouds. And it should be daylight for sure by the time we make camp. So we're very, very excited. It's been sprinkling on us a little bit, but nothing big. Hitchhike back and go have a good dinner. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we made it. That is, of course, where we came from. And Pretty Hollow Gap is the trail we're going, but we're not going to Catalucci Road. Um, I mean, beer and pizza does sound good, but we have a couple more days. So I think we're about eight tenths of a mile from our campsite. I will uh, record the campsite when we get there. I, I think there's going to be people there, so you know, I want to respect their privacy. I may try to record the campsite tomorrow before we leave, um, or I may try to um, do a little recording at night before I go to bed. I forgot we had one more junction. Um, we'll come back here tomorrow. We're going to take Palmer Creek up to Balsam Mountain Road, which is 3.3 miles. And then we have some road walking. And then, so we're not going either way. We're just going, I want to say it's, it's got to be less than a half a mile, but I'm not super sure. So, but I smell campfire. So there we go. All right. We made it to campsite 39. Oh, it's beautiful. It's in this pine grove. And right up there are our campmates. So I'm going to turn it off here. We're just going up to this trail right here. Hello again. We are set up at campsite 39. A uh, pretty nice place. Um, we the campsites are really spread out here, which is kind of nice. Uh, if you look behind me there, that is that is the group of people that are here. I'm not sure how many people. We just came right here. We set up. We're going to go get some water, and then we'll head up there and say hi. Um, so I think it's just a little bit after 8 right now. Um, the sun has gone down, but as you see, I mean, it's still kind of daylight out here. So um, it's really nice. Um, I'm just so happy to be in camp. It was such a great day. Catalucci Valley for any of you who are looking for another place to hike outside of Gatlinburg or outside of the bustle and you want just a pretty hike I mean this place was just beautiful and nice and the uphill today that I expected to be really tough was not um, and we are right next to a large deep stream or creek whatever uh, where there's probably some really good trout fishing we are probably less than a mile and a half away from the Cataloochee campground uh, so it's just a wonderful place that if you have not been out here you need to come um, so I'm gonna turn the camera around and so right back there is the camp sign that I just showed you 
my finger's so big. <laughs> um, and then I'm set up here. Got the Nemo Hornet. We're ready to sleep me tight tonight. We're going to start a campfire here. Probably maybe unless they invite us up there, then, you know, it's nothing wrong with being social. So we'll have to see how we go. Um, oh, and then, so I chose this site. I was going to be right next to Robin, but this looked a little bit flatter. But, and it, it looks pretty flat, but there really is a slope to it. And I have heard that Campsite 39 does have a pretty good slope to it. Um, so this one was about the flattest I could find. And then Robin got a good site over here. Um, she has the new, I don't know if it's new, it's the REI Quarter Dome two person tent. Um, it's new to her. Um, uh, and she's trying that out. It looks really nice. Yeah, ultra light version. She's got a really flat spot right there. And I probably could have gone right there, but then we would have been right on top of each other. And so I like that. And as you can hear in the distance, right across the trail, there is the creek and the, the trail just goes up that way so it's about 10 30 friday night um we had our dinner we had a great fire um we were able to just hang around for a while and that was nice um uh, no rain even nicer so yeah it was a good day i feel good um i did bring my deep tissue roller i'm about to use it i've been using it a little bit around the campfire but I feel good. I feel like it just wasn't a hard day. So I hope I feel that way tomorrow morning when I wake up. Um, so good night from the Nemo Hornet and I will see you in the morning. It is Saturday, April 24th, 2021. Um, <clears throat> we are still at campsite 39. I think it's called Pretty Hollow Gap Campsite. Um, it's, I don't know what time it is, probably about 8.30, 9 o'clock. Um, slept wonderful. Um, still had my 20 degree quilt and it said it only got down to 47. Um, I'm not so sure about these di digital thermometers. I have just a digital ambient temperature reading thermometer and it seems accurate other times when I use it and I know what the temperature is and it doesn't feel super cold out here but uh, 47 degrees seems awfully warm I did get up a couple times at the night to go to the bathroom and it well it wasn't really that cold but 47 seems awful high so I don't know for sure but um, but it's very comfortable it's sprinkling right now we have broken camp so everything's packed up but I did want to show some people, I know people are interested in bear hangs and um, how you store your food. Um, when I first got into backpacking, I got an Ursac, uh, which is a waterproof, bite proof, I guess, it's rodent proof and uh, supposed to be bear proof uh, bag. Um, I'm trying to think of the material that it's made out of, Kevlar maybe, I may be wrong about that. but. Um, <clears throat> you're supposed to be able to just tie it to a tree and there's kind of a way to tie it to make it best secure um and i've used it in indiana where i know there are no bears i've yet to use it in the smoky mountains i mean i you can but there's some security i think added security in the fact that the great smoky mountains national park has bear cables and bear hangs and i've mentioned them in other videos um, but i haven't really gone over them and i think most people 
probably know about them, but maybe they don't know some of them who never backpacked before. And I know some of you have reached out to me um, about, you know, different things because you haven't backpacked yet. So I thought I'd just kind of show this video of what we do and how it works. Okay, this is a bear cable. All the way up there, you can see the little disc um, that the cord, the cable that goes from tree, from that tree to that tree hangs straight across and the goal is to get your uh, food bag hung up there. I have kind of a typical Dyneema. There's a carabiner on there if I have to hang my bag um, what they call the PCT way uh, which is the Pacific Crest Trail way out there. They have to um, hang without these cables they don't have them tied to trees they don't have so what you have to do is you have to find a high branch for you and um, hang throw a rope and hang it uh, a certain way i've done it a couple times and i've done it hugely like i was so embarrassed and i'm so glad nobody was there both times um so anyway so that's why i have the carabiner on there because that's for my rope and i actually have a rope and a sack for a rock in here in case i ever do have to even though i know here they have bear cables. At this particular campsite, I've only seen two, but uh, this campsite is um, separated. It looks like the horse camp from the people camp. So I'm gonna try to do this without getting really shaky. <clears throat> but the goal is, so that little hook there should always be onto the tree. And that's just because bears don't have opposable thumbs. They can't take this little latch part off. So what I'm gonna do is undo it and pull one side of this rope towards me. So these little hooks are what you hook your bear bag into. As you see, it doesn't have the carabiner on there. It's supposed to be an easy type thing for you. If you hook this to the tree, a bear can easily kind of finagle that out. So then I just hang it on that hook right there. And then and you just pull it down. And as you see, the bear bag goes up. So we're going high and then we take the hook, hook it to the tree, it's secure. And so is my food bag. There it is. Sorry. So it just hangs there all night. All right. We are leaving camp. It is 842 and we are about, I think maybe a half a mile, maybe less from the junction of Pretty Hollow and Palmer Creek, which is where we're going up today. But I wanted to show you a funsy. It just tickles me every time you see a tree eating a sign. <laughs> All right, we made it to the junction. If we wanted to cut out and get away from the rain. We have just 1.6 miles, but we are not going to do that. We are going 3.3 to Balsam Mountain Road. And this is the pretty footbridge that will take us on our trail. How about that for a nice Saturday morning? I whipped out the umbrella and it works. It works. And so this is a Gossamer Gear uh, umbrella with the, they have a little bit of hardware that they give you. So they have a little latch that comes with it or that you can buy with it. But um, what the guy at REI told me to do is just get Velcro, use that latch and get Velcro to hold it in place. And, you know, 30 feet down the trail, it worked. <laughs>
have made it to Balsam Mountain Road. Uh, we just passed some hikers that stayed at Laurel Gap Shelter, which is where we're staying tonight. And they said they left us plenty of firewood, so we are so stoked. Um, so we were just on the Palmer Creek Trail, so I'm just showing you that sign. We have to walk this road right here for, I think, maybe a half a mile. And um, when I get to Balsam Mountain Trailhead, I will let you know. Okay, that road was only a half a mile of nice, soft gravel level. It was awesome. <laughs> so now we are headed up Balsam Mountain. Um, I think where we meet the Beach Gap Trail is where the Benton Mackay starts. And then that Mount Sterling Ridge is what we'll hike tomorrow. Um, Gunter Fork, I think, goes down the opposite direction that we're in. It will go down like toward Cosby area, I think. So, still raining. Only a couple times has it been heavy. Um, but we've, we've fared well. Um, no falls yet this trip. And pretty wild, wild flowers. And we met some people at the trailhead. I think I already said that. Never mind. <laughs> um, yeah. We've stopped and had a little bit of a snack. And here's to the next 2.3 miles. Uphill, of course. The rain has pretty much stopped, just kind of sprinkling. I don't have my umbrella on anymore. There's so much old growth here. So many huge, huge trees. Um, it's just so pretty. We have made it to the juncture of Balsam Mountain Trail and, oh sorry, um, Beach Gap Trail. So I kind of assumed that it would say the Benton Mackay Trail, but I don't see that anywhere. It just says um, Mount Sterling Ridge Trail is two miles the way we're going. Uh, shows Bals Balsam Mountain Road where we just came from and Gunther Fork is going the same direction we are. Um, somebody must have thought their trail mates were going to get lost because there's a big arrow <laughs> right at the juncture. <laughs> That's funny. We have about 1.7 miles to Laurel Gap Shelter. It started to rain again, but it's just a light rain. So we should be there soon. All right. So we made it to Laurel Gap Shelter. Um, I'm not sure if there's anybody in there. I don't see a fire going. We may have this to ourselves because we're the only dumb people out here right now. Um, so we're right on the trail, it looks like. Yeah, I didn't think it was right on the trail, but it is. All right. Oh my God, we have it all to ourselves. Oh, this is gonna be awesome. All right, I am going to unload and eat lunch and then I will get back with you. All right. Hello. Hi. We are at Laurel Gap. Laurel and it's Gap just Shelter. Just the two of us. Take them on a tour. Okay. Okay. So here's the rip roar and fire. Yep. Pretty nice. We're drying all of our things up here. Pretty, pretty nice. It's about six something. To, oh. <laughs> it is quarter till seven. Quarter till seven. We have done all of our chores. Um, we have plenty of water for tomorrow. If you stay at Laurel Gap Shelter, the water is about, I don't know what, maybe 5,000 feet down. 
it seemed like it. And then 5,000 feet back up. Yes. So be prepared. It's a good uh, water source. <laughs> it is a good water source. It had the, um, somebody had left like a little laurel leaf. Mm -hmm. uh, so it wasn't too no, bad. No, it was good. Yeah. Um, on our way up, we had cell service. So we both called our husbands. Mm -hmm. And um, every now and then we'll get a text out right at the shelter a bit. And you have what? Uh, I have Verizon, Verizon, so it's on I Verizon. have T-Mobile Sprint. And it's a no-go. Sorry. <laughs> um, we've had some hot chocolate and tea. Mm -hmm. We have cut up our wood. Um, I have this saw that is just Amazing. the bomb. Um, and so we've got plenty of firewood. Uh, some guys that we met last earlier left some firewood. Um, mm -hmm. And it had gotten wet, but it's, dry it's drying and burning pretty good, as you saw. Yeah, it's great. And then we put a tarp up. So let me show you around. Take care of the shelter. This is our home for the night. Those are my pants hanging <laughs> and my rain jacket hanging. That's my side of the, this can hold 20 people, 10 on top, 10 on bottom, but I have that entire half. So you're, you're good for 10 people. I'm good for 10 people. And Robin is good for 10 people mm -hmm. and she's got her rain gear hanging up. So that's not too bad. It's got a sunroof sunlight sun mm -hmm. i don't know what you call it skylight skylight so that it wakes us up in the morning because we're going to be tired mm -hmm. <laughs> and then over here is the fireplace that's not rip roaring anymore we got to add some some smaller logs too yeah um super nice though um this tarp was not here when we put it up it was not up i should say when we put it up um it was outside rolled up but we kind of figured out how to hang it and um it's not perfect it's not like i've seen them before where they have them straight out and everything so um we will fold it and roll it tomorrow before we leave um because i'm sure for the most part in during the spring you don't need it so but it's like 45 46 degrees right now so so this is a little picnic area right here that's where some of our firewood is to um cut up and then on nice nights nice days there's a firing and back oops sorry <laughs> back through here is a water source that looks flat and kind of is and then it drops down there's your little sign that tells you the top one tells you your water source is that way to the left and your toilet area is to the right it is just an area there's no privy here so uh this is a livestock also shelter so the little bars for the horses or what do you, what do you call the hitching post, I guess, um, is right there. And that tarp was rolled up right there. So we'll, we'll make sure to put that back. Um, but it's still socked in. It hasn't been raining since we've been here. It's just been kind of drizzle and, um, the smoke is rolling through. Um, it's super nice though. It's, even if we had, we were supposed to have uh, nine more people here with us tonight. So everybody chickened out except for us Indiana chicks. Um, but it's a really nice shelter. I know they're all pretty much the same. Uh, it's just such a joy to see a shelter after you've hiked today or hiked during the day. Um, so um, I think we hiked 8.7 miles today. Um, of course, it was all uphill, more so than I thought, um, but we did it. And, you know, I'm not a fast hiker, um, so I kind of, not really. <laughs> she was right behind me the whole day. <laughs> um, but I think I like the lower miles because of that, because I like to get to camp um, before dark. And it seems like when I hike, 12 and 13 miles a day. I'm just not getting to camp before dark. Um, so I kind of like this. Uh, we did what we do nine miles yesterday, eight miles today. And I think it's like eight miles tomorrow going out. So um, I'm okay with that. I think our pace was between a mile and a mile and a half for most of it. I think my fastest pace, I haven't been able to really look at my Garmin app yet but i think the fastest pace was like two and a half but there was some down there was some flat flat and i can go fast but the uphill you know it just 
it just is what it is. So it might take me a little longer to do the 900 miler, but, um, but I'm okay with that. So, uh, yeah, tomorrow the plan is to get up fairly early, uh, to hike back to the car and then to head to chair. Well, first to head to, um, uh, Catalucci Valley to see if we can see elk and then to Cherokee or somewhere along the way to find some good pizza beer or Mexican beer or Mexican pizza beer. Um, yeah. <laughs> and then, um, if we don't see elk in the middle of the day, um, at Catalucci, we might go back through there before we head home. So, uh, we're going to get the most out of this trip as we can. Robin has, um, completed a hundred miles on her, uh, little hike, hiker, um, pamphlet. Uh, you will get pins at a hundred miles, 250 miles and 500 miles. Um, so she has that booklet and she is going to uh, get her pin, her 100 mile pin tomorrow. So we're kind of excited about that. So, um, all right, well, I think I'm going to head back inside. I'm going to maybe make some dinner and chill out, maybe watch some friends. I, I have that downloaded and, um, yeah, that's how I usually go to, go to sleep at night. So, um, yeah. So anyway, well, I will see you tomorrow morning. It is Sunday, April 25th, uh, 2021, and we have made it out of Laurel Gap Shelter. This is the uh, juncture to the Gunter Fork Trail and Balsam Mountain Trail, which leads to the Appalachian Trail once it gets off the bit in Mackay. Um, <clears throat> it, the sign here says that the Laurel Gap Shelter is 0.3 miles. It My uh, GPS says 0.17 this is the first Benton Mackay trail sign that we've seen on the trail. We figured there would be markers on the trees, <clears throat> excuse me, like a, like the Appalachian Trail has, but um, there don't seem to be, at least not right here. So we are going on the Mount Sterling Ridge Trail. Um, we're going past the Pretty Hollow Gap and past the Swallow Fork. Um, we're going to Mount Sterling, which says it's 5.4. Uh, there might be a little bit up and down the first mile, and then after that, it's supposed to be flat. We will see. All right, so we're on a good, nice, flat section of Mount Sterling Ridge Trail, and I think it's going to be flat for the, more, for the duration. So last night, we, we were still the only two there. I think I already said, but there were supposed to be nine others. And no one showed up, so that was really nice. We had it all to ourselves. We had a great fire going. In fact, we had it going for just a, a little bit this morning. Um, but um, we knew it was going to rain. I was able to get enough cell service to see uh, the forecast again. And it still looked the same. It said a little bit, maybe a little bit of overnight rain. But we wanted to hang our packs um, so the mice, if there were mice, wouldn't get them if they came into the shelter. Um, so we tried to hang them on the little hanging knobs that they had in there and it just wasn't working. So we decided just to hang them with our food bags. That would have been a great idea if it hadn't downpoured all night long. We had our pack covers on, so it wasn't bad, but I kept waking up last night thinking, I'm not going to be able to put my pack on. It's going to be like 10 pounds heavier. Um, it wasn't. It was okay, but it was just our luck. Um, but everything turned out fine. Ooh. Ah. And, um, yeah, no mice. We thought we saw a snake hole in the um, shelter, but we never saw any snake. In fact, the only wildlife we have seen is turkey. We saw two turkey 
on Friday. Um, I couldn't get my camera out fast enough. But uh, that's all we've seen. We've seen a lot of horse poo because this is a horse trail. We thought it was elk poo. We got really excited and then we realized that it was probably horse poo. <laughs> so, um, we listened to a podcast and then went to bed about, probably about 10 o'clock. And I stayed very warm. I think Robin did too. Um, it wasn't so bad. I think my temperature, my digital thermometer read 41 was the low. Um, the wind would blow every now and then, but we, I think we showed you the tarp. We put the tarp up. We left it up because we knew it would be like this today. Unfortunately, I don't think we're going to have sun. I don't think we're going to be able to see anything from the Mount Sterling Fire Tower. So I probably won't go there unless the sun comes out. But as you can see, it's still, we're still part of the Smoky Mountain Rain. <laughs> so we're just making our way around all the mud puddles, but it's very flat. And uh, we thought this morning we were up to type three fun, but I think we're back down to type two fun. So by the time we hit the car, it'll be type one, I'm sure. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, there it goes. Maybe. stepping back. I know I know it's going to go that way, but Okay. We finally made it to the sign. There's the Benton Mackay Trail, Mount Sterling. Oh, sorry. Mount Sterling Bridge Trail going to Mount Sterling Trail, which is 1.4, and this way here is Swallow Fork Creek Trail. Um, of course, we're not going that way. We're going this way, and we were going to stay here and maybe have a snack, but, oh, I missed Pretty Hollow Trail. I'm sorry, and then Pretty Hollow Trail. Yeah, we stayed at Campsite 39 from here. That's 3.7 miles. Um, so this is the other side of that pretty hollow trail from uh, the Sterling Ridge Trail on the Benton Mackay. But we're going this way. We were going to stop, but the wind has really picked up. We're around a bunch of old trees, and we're going to try to knock this last section out really quick so we can get down. This oh. is us. After I have lay down, but I don't want to get a half a mile of straight up, straight up, counting 50 paces at a time. Straight up. It was straight up. We half a like mile. Mountain goat. Straight up. Yeah. No joke. No joke. Get a good, oh, a maybe I can. Through, oh, well, maybe I need justice. to turn it around though. <laughs> that doesn't do it justice. Oh gosh, no. Oh, not in gosh. this. Look at this. That looks flat in here. Oh, no, <clears> it was not flat. I should pull my camera flat. I'm there is sure my camera was, flat. I'm going to say 45 minutes. It was about a 80 degree angle and about 4,500 feet up. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. But looky here. We are at the junction. Woohoo! Woo! Woo! <laughs> it's all downhill from now. <clears throat> so this is, this is still the Mount Sterling Ridge Trail. Um, if you go... It doesn't have it on here, but if you go like 0.3 mile, you hit um, uh, Campsite 38 and the fire tower. But as you see, the sun is not coming out anytime soon. And we're tired. And we're already trying to decide between Mexican or beer. So Mexican or beer? Mexican or beer. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny that there's a choice. <laughs> <laughs> That's how worn out I'm at. <laughs> pizza. 
pizza the or Mexican. It's either beer or margaritas. That's what it is. <laughs> so we are headed down. Um, it says the Mount Sterling Trail. We're headed to Long Bunk, and that is, huh? Mount Sterling Gap is 2.3. <laughs> Long Bunk is 0.8. So we have a total of 2.3 miles. She's doubled over. She's doubled over. <laughs> we're slap happy, which is really bad because we're about to go like straight down. And so no falls yet. This uh, trip, they're going to happen now. <laughs> we'll get back to you in 2.3 miles. So the sun is finally coming out. We have less than two miles to the car. It's thinking it's safe that Cindy's getting off the mountain. All right, we've made it back to the, where is it? There it is, Mount Sterling Trailhead. We just passed three sets of people on day hikes. That's kind of nice. Um, and of course we did because the sun is trying to make the appearance. 